Welcome back everyone to my BB Can 6 recaps. We're now into week 9. Um, you know, the finale is next week. I'm going to get to go down to Toronto, uh, see all my old friends, past house guests, alum and all that stuff. And get to meet the new cast from this year. I've met a bunch of them already from the pre-jury. But now I'll finally get to go and meet the winner, uh, the jury members, all that. We're going to have a good time. We're doing it in Barrie this year and it's going to be fun. I also want to give a shout out again to FI Collection. Uh, your hats are amazing. I got a bunch up here. My Juventus hat, which is my team. Thank you guys so much. Check it out, FICollection.com. So that being said, guys, let's get to it. We have a bit to talk about this week. So the show kind of recaps uh, what kind of happened at the eviction. Uh, the week before, it was the triple eviction. Uh, you see Kayla and Alejandro on the block. And there's a few deals made throughout the week, you know, to keep Kayla safe. I think Paris made a deal to keep uh, Kayla safe. Um, but here's the thing. Now they're on the couch just kind of moments before they have to go in to vote. And they're all kind of talking back and forth. Maddie gets up. She says, hey, I'm voting out Alejandra. And she goes in to vote. Uh, kind of, you know, putting the other house guests kind of in a tough situation. Kind of like, hey, she's going in to vote Alejandra. We kind of have to go that way or we're screwed. So Maddie single-handedly screwed over not only herself, but kind of the other house guests, uh, Johnny, uh, Olivia, and all that. The people that kind of left uh, during the triple eviction. It's honestly, it's all Maddie's fault because if they could have just, you know, had a few more seconds to talk or if she didn't say, hey, I'm voting out Ali and stormed off and to go and vote, I think they could have flipped it around, maybe decided, hey guys, what are we doing here? We have to get Kayla out. She's on the block. She's sitting there. There's nothing she can do. Let's vote her out. See you later. Break up that showman's. But it didn't happen. So anyway, Kayla goes and wins HOH. You know, she was literally two seconds away from being voted out. And now she's HOH. It's happened a few times this season. And here's the thing. Like I said before, Kayla is a boss. That girl is a competition beast. She's just killing it this year. And she wins when she has to. She had to win this, this week. And she did. So now she has her focus on Maddie and Paris. And that's who she nominates for eviction this week. So right before the HOH competition, they do a little flashback to Kayla in the room kind of telling herself, I have to win this, I have to win this, I have to win this. She basically knows that this competition is a $100,000 competition. If she loses this, she's going home. So she knows she has to win this, not only for her, but for her alliance member, Derek, and then they can control the numbers. So it was a trivia based, um, HOH about lines of uh, the HOHs, uh, what week was it and all that stuff, a trivia one like that. And we go down to a tiebreaker. Now, the tiebreaker question was how many boulders were shot in that medieval competition? The one, I love that competition, by the way. It was amazing. How many boulders were shot in total? And I've said this in, in my recap videos. I've said this in my video on tips on how to play the game. Uh, you have to dissect every single competition. Everything, how many balls were dropped, how many balls were thrown, how many hoops were there, what different colors were there, how many squares, whatever it is, uh, how many rotations, how many minutes was the competition, whatever it is, you have to dissect that competition down to nothing until you can't dissect it anymore. I've said it many times, it's very, 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 very important for these tiebreakers because the majority of them are about competitions. So the question was, uh, how many boulders were launched in this medieval competition? And Kayla gets it right, and she is your new HOH. So you see a segment about Maddie, you know, talking to Paris and Will about this plan on how to get Derek out. If uh, Maddie and Paris go on the block, if Will wins the veto, um, he uses it to save one. Kayla has to put Derek on the block. They vote out Derek. And, and all that stuff. Now, I know they made it sound like she came up with this idea off the top of her head and she, you know, strategized this idea. It's a very, very common plan at this moment in time in the game uh, because that's just how it is. Everything is on the veto uh, from here on out. So it, it's not the first time anybody's come up with this. It, it happens every single year because whoever wins the HOH obviously doesn't want to put up their ally and it's always the way for them to have to get their own ally out of the game or the the rest of the people in the house to get the hoh's ally out of the game there's nothing they can do um so it's nothing new but they kind of spin it to where it makes it seem like maddie came up with this great plan it's a very common plan at this point in the game just like into this next week going in it's all about the veto the hoh just gives you safety it's like having a second veto 
but it's nothing really crazy because uh, they nominate the two people and there's only one person left. So whoever wins the veto comes off, the next person goes up, one person votes, whoever wins the veto has the sole vote. So we're at a point in the game where veto is everything um, and HOH just guarantees your safety more than anything. But yeah, so Maddie comes up with this plan. Um, again, basic plan, but I'm glad they showed it to the audience because you don't really see that kind of plan or play being broadcasted at this point in the game. So anyway, um, yeah, that's the plan. If and it is a smart play. If you know it, it is the right play. If it's Maddie and Paris on the block, Will wins it, pulls one of them off, Derek has to go up, boom, they vote him out, now it's three against one. Now here's the other thing. I know a lot of the, the fans and stuff are talking about how they want to see Kayla cut Derek. I'm going to tell you guys right now, that is the worst move for her game right now. There's no way she's going to do that. I know as a fan perspective, you want to see something cool like that. It's not going to happen. Maybe at final three, for sure. It's a good move on her resume, but she has to get to the final three. And by Derek being in that house is really upping her chances and making a greater chance for her to make it to final three. If she cuts him at final five, it is now going to be three against one. Nobody's taking Kayla. It's not the right move. And she can't be that stupid to do it. I'm glad she didn't because, come on, guys, it's just never going to happen at this point in the game. Like I said, maybe final three she'll cut him, but not a final five. Five. She still needs him at least for the next week. When they hit uh, final three, she can cut him. It's a good move on her resume, but I do believe she wins this game sitting beside Derek uh, either way. So let's see if she actually uh, does it or not. Uh, but I, I honestly don't think she has to. I think she can even take him to final two and win against him. But I think it's just a prettier move and a better move for TV if she cuts him and beats whoever uh, she's sitting beside. But anyway... Um, yeah, she doesn't cut Derek. I know everyone wants her to. Not going to happen. Never going to happen. And I'm glad she didn't do it. So now I want to get into this deal that Will made with Derek and Kayla. Guys, uh, you know, uh, he swore on his kid that he would never, he wouldn't win the veto or he wouldn't use the veto if he wanted or whatever. Um, listen, I get it. I personally would never swear on my kids in the house. That was one thing I wouldn't do. Um, just because it's just not, not the way I wanted to play. I never brought it up once. Never. And in, in both times I played, never talked about my kids or swearing on my kids or anything like that. Um, but if you do, whatever, it's not a shot at him like that. But guys, this is big brother. There's a hundred thousand dollar prize at the end. You're, this is a game of lies and manipulation. Um, so, you know, they, they will tells them I'm not going to use the veto, uh, if I win it, blah, blah, blah. So now we're in the veto competition. I want to say, actually, I want to say this veto competition was amazing. It was so cool. The voodoo thing and the, and the colors, which is another thing I want to talk about because I am colorblind. As some of you may know, some of you may not know, I am colorblind. So a competition like this, they either wouldn't put it in a season that I'm in or they would have to do something completely different about the colors uh, because I literally would not be able to play that competition simply because I wouldn't be able to dif differentiate, 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 I can't even say that word, uh, the, the colors. So a competition like that, I wouldn't be able to play. Um, so anyway, that's beside the point, but it was a great competition. And now we're down to the final three in the competition is Will, it's um, Kayla, and it's Derek. So, you know, Derek's telling Will, hey, you're guaranteed Final Four if you drop, you know, you're safe. And Will, I mean, the dummy drops. Like, what are you doing, man? You know, if you win that veto, you are guaranteed Final Four. Nobody can touch you. Nobody's going to get you out. Nobody can do anything to you because you have that veto. You can use it. Force Kayla to put Derek on the block. You guys vote him out. Hey, you lied. I get it. But hey, that's the things you got to do. And those are the moves that are going to win you $100,000 in the end. And then you could have Maddie, Paris, yourself against Kayla going into next week. And the three of you can battle it out. But nope, Will just drops. He looked like he was solid. Derek and Kayla were struggling. Uh, Will looked like he was solid up there. And he just drops Gives them the game. Will, what are you doing, man? Like, this was your chance to do something. This was your chance to prove you deserve to be where you are. You've kind of done nothing all season. Um, you know, kind of sucks, man. I Actually, I'm, I'm looking forward to hanging out with Will. I'm going to meet him next week. Seems like a really, really cool guy. But, man, horrible, dude. Horrible. Um, like, he 10 out of 10 times, he should have won that veto. Used it. Throw Derek up. See you later. And your chances of winning go up so 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 high but instead one of your allies are going home you're kind of stuck as whatever you're in the middle and you're not going to go too far um so anyway uh will throws the veto Derek ends up winning 
uh, sorry, Kayla ends up winning, uh, keeps everything the same, and now we're down. So now it's either Paris or Maddie are going home this week. So now on the Thursday night episode, it shows a clip of Maddie studying with like, uh, I think it was like Kleenex squares and, and new pasta noodles and stuff. Now, again, that's a very, very common thing in the house. Everybody studies or and we should be studying. Most people study. Some people don't, uh, but the majority of people do. On season three, myself and Bobby did the exact same thing. We used the cushion pillow. Uh, we've made squares and you do seven lines. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And everything happens on the same days. You usually have your tasks on a certain day. You have your veto ceremonies on a certain day. Uh, your eviction night is always on Thursdays. Uh, all the ceremonies are on certain days. So it's very easy when you paint it out myself, I'm a visual person. So when we'd make big grids like that, you can kind of see exactly what the days are, the evictions, the vetoes, if, if they were used or not. And it's an easy way to break it down. So again, they showed Maddie doing this. Uh, it's a very, very common thing. Uh, both times I played every, a lot of people were making, uh, grids like that. And it's very, very common. Um, but yeah, that's what you do. That's how you, that's how you study visually to break down the game. Um, but it's, you know, good on her. And it's a shame, I, you know, I, I've been rooting for Maddie all season. It's a shame to see her go. Um, I think she's going to be a great addition to the family and I'm very happy she's from Ottawa and uh, I'm sure we'll be hanging out quite a bit and we have a lot to talk about. I want to talk about that jury segment a little bit um, and this isn't a shot at Johnny whatsoever in any way. I honestly forgot, I totally forgot about Johnny. Um, you see Olivia, or sorry, you see Alejandra coming in the car, they do a little clip and it's, it's funny when we do those clips of going to jury and stuff, it's very awkward, they're very, very, very long. Um, you know, you guys, it's a, it's a what, three minute clip on the TV, but it's like an all day thing and it's an all day filming thing. And it's a long, long day. Usually like, uh, for instance, like Alejandro that day would start doing press probably six or seven in the morning, uh, doing the different interviews, the radio stations, global ET Canada, whatever, all that stuff. She has probably like six, seven to 10 different interviews she has to do in the morning. And it takes probably till about the afternoon. Then they got to drive out to the jury house which is usually an hour, a couple hours away from the house. So they got to drive away. Sometimes it's like three hours away. Um, it's a long day. By the time they get to the jury house, it could be like six, seven o'clock at night. So it's a full day of just interviews, waiting, uh, hurry up and wait. A lot of those, the driving, the clips in the car, uh, where they do the jury segment and then, you know, Alejandra's in the car and they're kind of like, she's talking and looking out the window that takes like hours. It takes like two or three hours. You're just driving up and down a road. Um, you know, it's all made for TV, but in reality, you're driving up and down the same road. Uh, there's someone in the, in the, so you have the driver, you have the cameraman in the front seat kind of facing backwards, facing you. And then you have like a DR person in the back seat with you that you won't see. And he's kind of hiding on the floor and he'll be asking you questions like you're in the DR, like, okay, how are you feeling? And then it's like, oh, you know, it sucks that I'm there. And then I think she's just like, oh, I feel like I could cry right now. So they're asking you the questions. They're setting the tone when they're talking. They're very like, okay, like they want you to feel sad, uh, things like that. So there's a lot of that driving up and down, filming in the car um, to get to jury. Then when you get to jury, you're actually parked out front sometimes for like an hour. And they're doing a lot of the interviews with the people in jury house. This time it was only Ryan. He was there by himself, but they'll be interviewing Ryan in the house. Um, you know, who he thinks going to come there. He's doing his little segments and all that stuff, uh, painting and all that crap. Um, skip the dishes anyway so that's that's what he's doing all day and there's a ton of people there there's probably like 20 people running around the house different cameramen and stuff like that um so it's a full day shoot so by the time alejandra and everyone gets there it's late by the time they're done filming because then they come in it's probably another couple hours blah 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 uh, anyway, but, uh, again, I totally forgot about Johnny. I'm not even kidding. And it's not a shot at the guy because I thought he was one of the better players to play this season. It wasn't a shot. I, for some reason, when I saw him coming in the jury section, uh, I was like, oh man, I actually totally forgot about him. Um, which is kind of weird, but anyway, um, so that's how the jury segments work and, and jury and all that stuff. And now I'll actually, I'll tell you a few things about jury while, you know, we're on the, that subject. Um, you can watch TV, but it's not uh, like television with cable and stuff. You have a lot of like uh, DVDs and, and they have like a like a terabyte full of movies and you can watch some movies. Nothing too, too new because um, you can't watch anything that has been released while you're in the house. So anything before that, you can watch a lot of movies, series, Game of Thrones. You watch a lot of Game of Thrones, Spart the Spartacus, uh, Vikings, stuff like that. Watch a lot of series. 
um, you can, there's food, you, you live with a couple people from production. So there's a couple people that live with you. They obviously want to make sure you're safe. You don't run away. You don't leave. There's no phones in there. There's no cameras in there. Uh, but there's books and pens and paper. You can play board games. You can do anything you want. Um, anything you want. You can sleep all day, do whatever you want. You just cannot leave. And um, you cannot, like, there's no uh, radio, there's no phones, there's no TV or internet, stuff like that. But there are a lot of movies. So you do end up just watching a lot of movies. You talk, you chat. And um, it's a lot of, you know, because when you're in the game and you meet someone in the game, you're automatically in game mode. And I feel like once you go into jury and you talk to people, sometimes you kind of actually get to, like, know who they are because you're not playing the game against them anymore. Now it's like, all right, you kind of throw your cards at them and say, yeah, I was coming for you this week. Uh, you almost went home and this happened and this happened. And you laugh about it and you become friends. And, you know, perfect example for myself, Dre and William, while I was in the house, I had zero connection with them. They wanted me out from day one. We get to jury. I stayed up till six in the morning with them the first night just talking laughing getting to know them uh we're good friends today i talk to dre and william all the time and uh you know it's just it's funny how that works when you're in the house you're kind of your guards up but once your game's over and you guys are sitting in jury it's like hey listen you lost i lost who cares let's uh let's you know let's have a drink whatever and uh, it's cool from there so that's kind of how the jury works uh just a little insight on that hope you guys enjoyed that um, if you have any more questions about that, just, you know, ask it in the comments below and uh, hopefully I can answer any questions that, um, that you have. So I just want to say, I really liked Maddie's final speech. You could tell how much she loves this game. It means so much to her. And I'm really, really happy for her that she got to play and live out her dream. I know a lot of people, you know, they, they really want to play this game. And I'm really happy for her. She said she tried out for five seasons. Finally, on the sixth one, she made it. Good for her. I'm happy. I just wish she played it a little differently. I wish she played a little harder. I know she's going to look back and have a lot of regrets um, on what she did. But that's normal. A lot of people do. They have a lot of regrets on what happens. Um, but you know what? I I'm happy for her. I'm happy she, she got to do this and live out her dream. And uh, you know what? Final five is nothing to sneeze at. You know, maybe she didn't get there, a, you know, a different way, maybe a different way that people would have wanted her to get there. But you know what? She got there regardless. So good for her. And uh, I can't wait to meet her after all this. Talk about it. Hang out. Have some barbecues, whatever. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. So guys, um, this is the recap for this week. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Um, you know, this, the next one, I don't know how I'm going to do it because I am leaving here Wednesday. I'm driving down to Toronto and I'll be there for the finale. And then we'll go away to Barry for the weekend. All the alum and, and the players from like Survivor, Amazing Race, whatever. Everyone comes down. We all hang out. So I don't know when or how I'm going to do the next recap because I will be uh, out of town till about Monday. So we'll have to see, but you know, maybe I'll do, uh, some stuff with some of the house guests that are there. Maybe we'll do something. I'll figure something out. But anyway, guys, please, um, you know, thank you. I just want to say thank you guys for every, all the love and everything you've showed throughout the season. Um, I hear you. I see you. Thank you so much. You guys have been so great. So positive. Um, and I'm thinking about doing it for the American season. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. I'm busy with work and, and life and kids and everything. Um, so I'm going to try, I'm going to try to do it. See if I can. And uh, I really enjoyed doing it. And I'm glad that, you know, a lot of you have been uh, messaging me and telling me how much you appreciate these and stuff and the, and the inside uh, scoop and the inside stuff that I know that I'm, I'm sharing with you guys. Um, so, you know what? I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the love and I, and I really like to do this. So, um, guys, thank you guys very, very much for watching all these videos. Um, you know, it, it means a lot to me that you guys actually care to hear what I have to say about the season. Uh, again, I did it all without watching any live feed. So I tried to be uh, as accurate as I could with the information I had. Uh, and I hope I was pretty close. Uh, that being said, guys, you know, hit that sub button, hit that like button, leave some comments. Let me know what you thought about my recaps throughout the whole season. Which one did you like the best? Uh, what parts did you like the best? What should I do to improve on them? Uh, let me know. So guys, that's my recaps for BBCAN6. Thank you so much. <coughs> um, hopefully uh, you'll hear from me soon. Take care, guys.